so it's on Tuesday afternoon. Some random dude's office. Sure it was. He's at lunch. Gonna be funny as fuck when he comes back in though. Having no clue what's going on. Some fucking tattooed construction work they were doing. Tenant improvement is in your office. Recording YouTube videos. Now there's just a couple things that I had to say, man, and I wanna start I wanna say for every single one of you <clears throat> And the vast majority are, are like this and have uh, nothing but good things to tell me, man. I appreciate all that. And even for people that are trying to look out saying, um, this person saying that and this person saying this, and I don't need to hear all that, man. I don't. It's a very simple rule, man. If you if they can't say it to your face, it means nothing. These internet whispers or these internet tough guys. I don't even think about it no more. I'll tell you the truth. It's a, it's just a fucking joke. There's too many um there's too many good people here to focus on that. You know, focus on all these people that are trying to kick a dope, trying to kick methadone, and, you know, they need people that got through that shit, to let them know that there is another side, you know, that methadone withdrawal was, it was the worst time of my life, and I swear to God, I was fucked up for three months, first two the worst. And it's still more like eight, nine months. Ten months, eleven. It almost might be a year, actually. I don't know. No, probably about eight months. But still have residuals. You know. Cravings of uh They've really controlled. They were bad at first. I come across them every now and again, but I'm able to uh, get through it, you know? And so will you. Someone asked me how hard it was getting out of methadone. Hard as fuck. They're not called liquid handcuffs for no reason. But I'm sorry. You can't run around saying you're sober and you're taking methadone or suboxone. You're not sober. I was there too. I never said I was sober, but it's definitely an improvement over the life you were living before. But let's not fool ourselves and say, you know, 80, 90, 200 milligrams of methadone a day is sober. You know, but if that's what you need, that's what you need. You got to mentally prepare yourself for all this stuff, man. The mind is, it's so powerful that uh, you could talk yourself into anything, man. For years, I talked myself into it. I never was able to get off methanol. I can't leave the clinic. I'm going to get sick. I'm going to fuck it. I can't handle it. And when you realize you can and you do. It's like, and I kicked Oxycontin before the methadone, but I was, it was only like a month or two, and I never really fully recovered. So what I suggest, if you want to kick methadone, and you really want to stop, you know, drop dose one a week. Five a week, if you could do that, you know, get to a um a comfortable spot, 60, 70 milligrams, and then just chill, you know, get down to 40 and just chill, 
get down to 20, just you get your body used to it because that's the main issue is your mental well-being and physically. Is um, I still have to work every day. And uh, being dope sick and at work, fucking crazy, man. I remember fucking doing coke at work just so I get through the day. Now, I don't think that's like traditional methods of quitting, but I knew I don't get it. Um, coke don't get me like that, you know? It's just, it's like a waste. It's only high for 20 minutes anyway, and you want more, so. But at the time, I would have done anything to feel better. What got me through it was um, gabapentin, um, kratom, and weed. And none of them will completely get you through all that you're going through, man. It's just, there's no way. They're like, oh, kratom's like Vicodin. Or, no, kratom's like kratom, you know? And if your body's already depending on... Um, Opiates, it's not gonna have that strong effect. I mean, it'll it'll, it'll help with the um, restlessness, but you ain't gonna get fucked up. Maybe a little. I would take a ten to fifteen kratoms at a time. The same with gabapentin, man. I take at least six to ten, six hundred milligram gabapentins at a time. So stock up on gabapentin, get some kratoms, smoke some weed. And uh, prepare yourself for a battle, man. But the feeling of having to wake up and go to a clinic or go find your lockbox or that feeling is way worse than the feeling it takes to get off. Because ultimately, it's just, you know, you're ready to quit when, you know, change isn't as scary as staying the same, you know? Now, staying the same scares the fuck out of you. Change don't really scare you no more. That's when I knew I was fucking, I was ready and I was done with this shit, man. It's just, uh. It's no like to live. Yeah, we got into methadone withdrawal. It is what it is. Um, but the shit talking, yeah, man, I don't want. Someone talks shit and you hear it about me, I don't care. You know what I mean? People, I got people on here fucking talking shit, making shit up, doing what it, it, I don't care. You know what I mean? The crazy thing is that it, more of the shit talkers come from people that fucking actually know me, you know, <laughs> which is always confusing to me, but people don't like to see anybody happy, you know, a change or for the better when they, when they can't, I think is more the issue. Oh, yeah, for those of you that didn't know who Dago was, Dago was me. And uh, I had to put him on timeout for a while, man, but it's summertime and he wanted out, so we got to see about how, how, how nutty I am. They say bipolar with schizophrenia. Now I'm talking to Dago. Maybe making sense. Oh, damn, yeah, damn. Let's